Hey everyone, it's Fox from Modelmaking.Guru here, back with part three of our build of the Diagostini Studio Scale Millennium Falcon. Right, no new issues have arrived uh, yet, so um, not got anything new to show you. What I'm going to be doing today, I started work on painting the cockpit, not the actual cockpit walls and so on, because I haven't got all those yet, uh, but painting the furniture, the seats and so on. Uh, what I'm going to whiz through today is just some painting on these. I've decided to make these more instructional videos. Uh, I've had feedback on uh, ISM and on the my, on the Facebook Guru Facebook page and places that the this kit being a, a, a kit designed for people who aren't experienced in modelling, uh, quite a few people have no experience of painting models. And they've asked for lots of advice about how to paint and what to use. So I thought it might be nice to make this a bit more instructional than just, a, you know, I've made this and stuck things together. Um, so I might go into a bit more depth in the painting. I'll do lots of quick cuts today because I don't want to make it a long video. I'm trying to keep my video length down. What we're going to do is go through the three sets of seats. Um, so far I have done, uh, I'll show you what I've done on the, on the doorway. If I can get the focus to work. Uh, on the doorway I've done some mottling, you can see there's two different colours there and it's mottled. I've, I've kind of gone off the pictures of the studio set, the actual physical set of the Falcon, as best I can. Um, they're all strange colours and strangely coloured so it's not brilliant. Uh, so I've got German grey as the basic colour. Uh, the two colours on the padded side bits are, I'll show you, oops, uh, the colours we have are uh, XF72 brown and uh, I think XF55 deck tan uh, quite simply and we'll cover this method off in a little bit uh, the padded areas were painted the brown colour first and then were stippled over with the deck tan using a bit of uh, Brillo pad and I'll show you that on these seats um, the seats have been painted XF49 khaki. These are all Tamiya paints. Uh, and we're going to be stippling a different colour over the top and doing some weathering on those. Uh, and the passenger seats um, have been, all these were primed by the way with Tamiya grey primer. Uh, these were painted with flat aluminium, Tamiya flat aluminium. And then they were given a coat of this stuff, just bog standard hairspray. And you'll see why when we get round to those. So, uh, last waffle, we'll crack on. What we'll do first is just finish up with this doorway. So uh, let me go and get everything ready and we'll crack on with that. Okay, right, let's get this door done. <clears throat> right, as I said, I've pre-painted it already. Um, what we're going to do is add a bit of a wash to it um, to darken the recesses and give it some tone. Now, because the cockpit's never going to be touched, once the cockpit's built, no human hands, hopefully, are ever going to touch it. So, um, I'm not going to be using any, or not going to be using too many matte varnish applications. Often I'll do some weathering and sealing various layers with matte varnishes, but I don't need to here because it's never going to be touched. I don't need to finish the whole thing unless something comes out shiny. Um, so I've got that luxury, and the reason I'm not going to do that, another reason that's good, is because I'm going to use um, things like pastels and washes that when you spray a varnish on, uh, it can kind of make the pastels and all washes disappear. Um, especially water-based ones, so it's going to be an extra, extra bit of bonus. Uh, right, so all we're going to do is going to get some Ultimate Modeling Products Dark Dirt. I'm going to experiment here because I've never tried this. Don't know if it'll work. I've also got some Tamiya Weathering Pastel Master Pastels. Uh, what I'm going to do is move that out of the way. Uh, we have the Dark Dirt. I'm just going to shake it vigorously. Paul always says, "Give it a slap." But what he does on a Friday night, it's not my concern. Um, so I've shaken that quite vigorously. I'm going to put some into the little cake uh, cupcake tin pot thing. These are great because they're paper but they're lined with plastic so you can reuse them. Put the lid back on, always, because you'll spill it and then you'll be sad. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually mix in some of this black pastel. Just see if I can darken the, the wash a bit. Because I don't want it to be a reddy brown colour like the earth one. I want it to be darker. Mix some more. All I've done is bracely break up the, 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 the pastel with a cocktail stick. 
because it's a bit ready brown for the purpose I want. So I'm just going to try and make it darker. Uh, now I did actually ask Paul if he's going to be bringing out more shades of these Ultimate Washes because they are really good. And he says yes, they're working on different shades and different colours, so that's cool. Uh, if you could make a pastel version, a, a wash version of Starship Phil, I'd be the happiest man in the world. Because you know me and Starship Phil. So I'm just going to mix these in. That's come out, you can't see it on camera, but that's come out nice and dark now. So, dead simple. All you do is quite simply slap it on. Now I know that the back of this doorway is going to be covered by a sticker. But that's cool. I'm going to slap it on everywhere anyway. Probably a bit too thick, but that's fine. Now right now you're thinking, oh my god, what are you doing? You've just made it brown and filthy. No, we're going to rub most of this off, to be honest. And I just want to collect in the grooves and corners. And that's that. So I need to leave that to dry for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. Just put a bit more on, it's a bit thick. 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, and then when we come back, we'll rub some off. And we'll see what it comes out. It might be horribly wrong. I'm experimenting with these, and we've done this before. So I'll put that to one side. Uh, okay, now, while we're waiting for that to dry, I shall show you the stippling method on the pilot seats. So, to the pilot seats. Righty tighty. Got the pilot seats here, painted in Tamiya Khaki. Oh, by the way, um, in case anybody asks, all these seats and interior bits were brush painted. Um, I love my airbrush, but I'm also incredibly lazy. Um, and if there's a part I can brush paint instead of airbrush, like some small parts, then I'd much rather do that sometimes. Tamiya paints are great in that you can brush them with no hassle. They're self-level. They give a really nice, smooth layer of paint. Sometimes they need a couple of coats because they go a bit streaky. Um, but these were just brush painted. All the seats have been brush painted so far. Now, what we're going to do with these? Well, these are supposed to be leather Porsche seats. In reality, in, in the filming set, they were Porsche seats. Uh, and if you look at the studio shots, uh, they are quite battered and beaten. I'll post a couple of pictures in. Um, so I'm going to stipple in some lighter colours first. So these are painted khaki. I think what I'll paint in is some, I'm not sure, didn't plan this at all, I'm totally useless. Let's find a colour. I'm going to paint in some, uh, let's see how that compares, yeah some buff I think. Add some buff, because there's more to do, there won't just be this one coat, there'll be other weathering as well to darken it. So what I'm going to do, I'll get yourself a Brillo pad, take that bit off, this is what you want. Get yourself a pair of uh, reverse grip tweezers, the ones that open when you push them together. Purely because it's easier that way. And get yourself something to put the paint on. Let's throw a white balance out now. So all I'm going to do, in fact I don't even need that actually. Let's just put that away. Oh, I'm banging my head on everything, all the lights. Oh, I've got new lighting by the way, I've got three lights now. There are three lights. So hopefully this looks a bit better. So we have our seat, we have our buff. Uh, all you do is rip a small piece off the end. It's harder than it looks actually. Just a small piece. Got the scruffy end. Uh, roll it or fold it. Grab it with your reverse tweezers so that the scruffy end is here. And it's really simple. Dip in your paint. I shouldn't do it from the lid. I know, I know, I'm being bad, but I don't have a lot of use for buff normally, so. Uh, get a piece of kitchen roll, which I always forget. We're basically going to be dry brushing. So get your kitchen roll, get most of the paint off. And then go to your seat and just dab it on. And what you'll see is, I've covered this before, but you'll see little splatters and spats of paint. And it's completely random. This is what this is this technique I used on the uh, on the doorway. And that's all I'm looking for. Something really subtle. If you can see that. 
Right, okay, right, this is a time to dry now. You can see the wash is all, uh, all the water's gone. It's gone a slightly lighter shade. Um, all I'm going to do is remove it and get my hand in shot. Uh, dead simple, cotton buds, and I've got some water in this little tray. I'm going to try using them dry first, just to see what happens, because sometimes the, just doing it dry can take all the, uh, all the wash off that you want. So I'm just going to very lightly start rubbing over it. And this should start to remove the wash from the surface, exposing the paint underneath. Now it will be slightly discoloured from the wash, but that's cool, we can live with that. It is easier if you use water, but I'm just trying it this way just to get a particular grubby, grimy effect. I'll always try it dry first, just in case. I shall try a little bit of water. And all you do is get your water, damp it in the water. And then just get some of it off, wick some of it off on a piece of tissue, so it's not completely soaked. I want it damp, not wet. And then, very gently, just rub it over. Now this will make it light work of taking the wash off, so. But it should help expose the paint underneath even more. It does seem to have gone a bit grainy, but that was the nature of my experiment with the, uh, with the Tamiya pastels. So think, you didn't see any of that, could you? So the thing about model making, sometimes it's just about having fun and playing. Although, doing it on a £900 model, probably not the best move. And I think it is done. I'll post this as a photograph in a second, but that is exactly the effect I'm looking for. This kind of slightly temporary pointy stick, this slightly speckly effect, where it's darker in the in the grooves. Apart from that one, that's lighter, bizarrely. Um, and it's got some shading around the edges. That's quite nice the way it shades there and here with the light patch there. It's completely random, and that's the beauty of model making. It is always random. If you don't think too much and just have a basic plan and then when you're actually doing the thing you want to do, just do it. Don't don't worry about is that brush stroke right, is that just, just do it. When it comes to weathering and making things look scruffy or dirty. Don't plan too much. Just plan as much as you need to, the basics. No more. Alrighty, back to the pilot seats. Um, while I was off camera, I took a little time to add some UMP dark dirt wash to this. So it's gone into all the corners and grooves. Uh, it's given it a nice, oops, given it a nice rough, oh dear, given it a nice rough look. If you look at the, the seats in the studio set, they are kind of really blotchy and dirty. Uh, so that's coming along nicely. Next stage is to give it a, a quick dry brush. And for that we're going to be using Tamiya XF55 Deck Tan. Now you've seen me do dry brushing a million times before. So you're going to see me do it again. That's how it works. So I'm going to load the brush. Big, flat, soft brush. Going to get most of the paint off on the tissue. I know this isn't ideal the way I have the camera like this, so my hand's in the way, but uh, hey, I work with what I've got. Okay, get most of that paint off. It's important when you're dry brushing with acrylics, I try not to if I can, just because they can go lumpy and they're unpredictable, not like oils. So when you're dry brushing with acrylics, just try to get as much off as you possibly can. And then, notice by when my hands are getting progressively more and more covered in paint as we film this, because I'm filming it in like one go. Dead simple. Just simply, as you've seen me do before, almost no pressure just touch it to the model to the edges and it should slowly start to highlight the raised areas 
Now, I'm not too worried if it's going to do too, uh, sort of overdoes it. I'm not too fussed. Because there's still more we can do to bring it back, so. It's going to look a little weird. <laughs> and that, my friends, is a dry brush seat. So it's not perfect. It's not the best finish in the world, but again, I don't need a nice smooth finish. I'm looking for rough and ready and slightly lumpy. So that's going to do for this stage. So we'll let that dry with the other one. Uh, and we shall then go off and when that's dry, we'll stick some pastels on. So it's about time now to go back over to the passenger seats. So back in a moment. Okay, now we're going to look at the passenger seats. Uh, as I explained, these have been primed, uh, brush painted in Tamiya flat aluminium, which is an ever so slightly shiny colour. Uh, and what we're going to, do, and then it was coated in hairspray, just bog standard hairspray, sprayed over. What we're going to do now is add um, the black coating. If you look at the, sh I'll put a picture, but if you look, as far as I can tell from the studio shots, most of the seat is uh, like a shiny dark black colour that's all chipped away. These little stripy bits appear to be like a, a, a flat colour, flat dark colour, so I'm going to use rubber black for those. And then on the seats, the, the actual cushions are like a tan colour on one, like a khaki colour, and a lighter colour. The other one has lighter coloured cushions. Um, so what we're going to do, we've coated it in hairspray, that's a protective layer, and you'll see why in a moment for the paint chipping. I'm going to spray them now in a mixture of gunmetal X10 and flat black. Gunmetal for the shine and the metallic shine and the, the sort of, well, gunmetal colour. I think of it like shiny anthracite. And black, flat black. Uh, XF1 to darken it. Basically I want flat black with a hint of metallic shine and a little bit of glossiness but not too much. Uh, I can't give you the ratios because I literally mixed it in the airbrush cup. It's like put in a little bit of gunmetal, add some black, stir it, a bit more, stir it, a bit more, there you go. Uh, right, so now you'll note I'm not doing this in the spray booth um, I should do really, but it's easier to film like this, and it's only a small bit, so I've put some tissue around. Um, I'm not spraying a big model. So let's just get these sprayed. I hope you see all this. Low pressure. Not got much pressure going through. I'm just going to gently coat them. See if I can do it so you can see it. That'd be handy, wouldn't it? Right, I think that will do. So that's that sprayed with the gunmetal and flat black mix. Uh, I'm going to leave that to dry for five or ten minutes. Um, I'll probably paint the cushions off camera just because you won't see anything. Uh, and when we come back, we'll start the chipping uh, and other bits of weathering on there. So, give me five minutes. Well, not for you, for me. And we'll uh, we'll crack on. Okie dokie, right. I've uh, done a little bit of work on the seats off camera. What I have done is, uh, these are the bits we painted the gunmetal and black originally. I've painted these parts uh, tire rubber black, which is a slightly matter colour. This didn't come out as shiny as I'd hoped it would, but uh, oh well. Uh, I've painted the cushions, in this case was khaki, and then I mixed a little bit of khaki and black and painted the darker patches here, which I hope you can see. Uh, which are just supposed to suggest, you know, folds and creases. I know it's kind of cartoonish, but that's not a problem. Uh, so what we'll do now is chip all this gunmetal and black. Because as far as I can tell on the studio pictures, um, it's all chipped and worn. The paint's come off the bare metal, so you can see the bare metal coming through. So, we painted it with flat aluminium, then we covered it in hairspray. Why did we cover it in hairspray? Well, what it allows me to do apart from banging my head on the light, is first of all wet this paint, just water, just soaking it in water, and just the bits I want to chip. 
So I'll do that now. Not the rubber black, although it doesn't matter if I get water on there at the moment. I'm just going to concentrate on the uh, the gunmetal and black areas, and we'll do the back as well. I didn't fill in or add details to the back because you're not really going to see that in this model anyway. So I'm not really too bothered about that. If I had time on my side, I would uh, add all the little greeblies to the chair, but I don't sadly. So, leave that for a moment. What are we going to do? This is wet. Basically what happens is the water soaks through the paint and loosens it. But the hairspray acts as a shield and protects the, gun, the uh, flat aluminium underneath. So what we can do now is use a cocktail stick or a pin or the blade of a knife and we can basically chip away at this paint. Now I don't know if you'll see this because I've got to try and do this and keep you on camera so apologies if you can't see it. All I'm going to do First of all, get the knife because it's a nice flat edge. I'm just going to go across the edges here. Uh, let's have a look. Can you see that? Yeah. I'm just going to run it across the edges very gently. And you might hopefully see that as the paint comes off eventually, the flat aluminium underneath is exposed. Can you see that? I hope you can. I'll show you a picture at the end anyway. As long as you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to run it across the edges. I'm going to push this chair back on because it's coming off. Just take it off there, shall we? Right, so. Run it across the raised edges. And the paint should just very nicely just flake off. Without damaging the flat aluminium underneath little tiny chips and dings just where to suggest where the paint's worn off do a little bit on this round in the middle not too much I went I did a bit too much on the other one now we'll do some on the arms so you can use the pin however you want get the knife the edges off now I'm thinking on this more paint will have come off at the ends where you tend to have your hands so we'll scrape away at that just take your time right now the fun bit that I've been looking forward to is this bit I'm going to take it from the bottom and just gently chip again try and keep it red I'm trying to do blobs rather than strike stri stripes and it sometimes tends to go from from the edges Get that there. Try and get some big chunks coming off. Looks a bit minky now, but once it's dried, let's get my finger on there. Once it's dried, you get that kind of effect, which to me is spot on. A couple of little tiny dots, maybe. And that's the effect we're looking for. I'll show you the other one I did, uh, which came out a bit better, I'll be honest is that one and that's the effect you want now I can't matte varnish this because I'll lose the shine of the uh, of the flat aluminium and it looks a bit weird but hey so now there's one last stage and one last stage on this one is to give it a little bit of pastels now on the other chair because it had the lighter cushion I used a, a light sand pastel on this one I'm just using the Tamiya Weathering Pastels again. I'm going to use mud. And this is just really to blend in the colours on the cushion a bit. And it doesn't matter if I'm a bit careless with it because it's going to be dusty and muddy anyway. And dirty. So I'll just see if I can do it so you don't actually see my enormous hand in shot. This will blend in those colours. 
so they're not quite as cartoony. And some of it will get transferred to the other parts of the seat, so it'll just look like dust on the seat and just fade it slightly, which is cool. Oops. Of course, then I'll drop it and it will go out of shot completely. So I'll just rub it over the other parts of the seat. This the pastels also have a slight matting effect, so if I can get some of this on the on the rubber black, it'll dull that down a bit and make it stand out from the black even more. A bit on the arms, maybe. And let's get the other one back. Let's do a bit on there. I did do this on here already, but I'll do a bit of this colour as well, just to make it match. And that is our passenger seats. Right, last step now. Uh, back to the pilot's chairs. I've matte varnished these. Just give me a quick blast of matte varnish just because they're a bit too shiny. Uh, all we're going to do now is basically stick some pastels on there to blend in this blobbiness that we had and to blend the colours a bit more just to make them look even more awesome and also the, the, the pastels will give some matte varnish effect as well, some matting effect so I'm going to use the same pastels as before I'm going to use mud and light sand so first we're going to go for some mud this is a similar tone to the one that's already on the seas this is just literally going to blend the colours together a bit so we'll just do that not too much because I don't want to get rid of all the low lights and highlights I've already got. Now once the pastels are on, I can't handle this again without gloves. Because these will come off with and leave fingerprints, so you have to be very careful. I'm, just gonna sm I'm hardly pressing on this but I'm just using very little pressure. And then we're going to go for some light sand. And this will act as a highlight coat just around the edges and raised bits. But this will blend more than the dry brushing did. So I can blend this into like there where the seat is. In fact, I don't know if you can see it, but just to fade it a bit from the edge. So it's not just a big streak of colour. It's more of a patchy bit. see probably not now the thing with pastels is if you've matte varnished them and you can do uh, but it can fade them they kind of they're water soluble to a certain degree so it can fade them and you suddenly lose all your wonderful graded shades so what you have to do is if you if you're going to matte varnish them put on more than you think you need and that way, when they do fade slightly, they won't fade quite as much, it won't be as obvious. Smudge up my finger to get it off the raised bits. You can smudge them to a certain degree. And that is our finished seat. Again, a bit spotty, a bit patchy, but that's what I want because it's supposed to be battered. It's not supposed to be a nice clean leather seat. So again, I'll put a picture up of this so you can see it properly. Let's see if I can get close. See if my focus will behave itself. That is our seat done. So uh, that's going to go. Off, I'll go off and do the other seat, uh, and then when we come back, we'll just test fit these into the cockpit floor. Uh, I think we're done then. So back in a moment, and we're back. Right. So that's going to do it for this time. I've just cobbled these together really quickly so we can start to get a feeling of what this cockpit's going to look like. Uh, got the seats. They're not glued in yet. They're just placed in place. Uh, quite nicely done. I've not glued the yokes or anything in yet. I've not put the dashboard on. Um, I've added the little panel to the back of the door. The little sticker. Uh, and you can't really see, but I've added a little bit of pastel to the bottom of it. Just to just to fade it slightly. Let's uh, see if I can give you a close-up view. I don't know if this will focus or not. You can't really see. Um, but that's what we've got so far. All seats done. The door painted, the back panel's already done basically, there's just a sticker. Uh, the rest of the cockpit, I'm waiting for the cockpit walls before I start painting the actual console and floor and centre console. 
Um, so that's probably going to be the next bit, I think. We'll get the front front wall of here as well. So it might be in the next couple of episodes. Uh, one thing I've noticed, by the way, uh, if you're not planning on gluing this, these little control things here are dead loose. They don't really stay in place. So you might want to consider gluing those. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these yokes yet, whether I'm going to leave them bare metal because it looks kind of cool, um, or whether I'll paint them partially. I don't know yet. I don't want to get rid of the bare metal effect. But I think we're looking pretty spanky so far. Uh, once they're in place in the cockpit, you won't notice any little spotty bits on the seats and the subtle little marks and things. It's economies of scale. You won't you won't see that, um, especially when they'll be lit from behind anyway. So it'll look really cool. But that's uh, that's it. So that's going to do it for this time. Uh, I'm not sure what's in the next episode because I can't remember what's in the next issue, and it hopefully should be here in the next few days. Um, so I'll try and get another one of these up next weekend. If not, as quickly as possible. We're not exactly rushing here. We've got a two-year time frame. Um, so that'll do it for this time. Um, as always, uh, follow the thread on International Scale Modeler in the Work in Progress Sci-Fi section. Uh, myself and Clayton and a few others are, are building this. Um, or go to my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash modelmakingguru, uh, where I'll put up pictures of other builds and this as well. Uh, or modelmaking.guru, the website www.modelmaking.guru uh, and follow along but uh, we shall catch you next time and we'll see what comes up next time uh, but until then as always adios amigos.